it's fairly late in the day and me and Matt have just decided we'd like to have some soup beans for supper so he's going to use his um, he likes to do his in a pressure pot of course you, we've got an insta pot we could use it but Matt really loves this old pressure pot So Matt's cooked us some soup beans in the pressure pot. They're gonna be delicious for supper. I've got some cornbread in the oven. I've already fried some little strips of fat back, what we call fat back. Some people call it streaked lean. Um, it's really salt pork. It goes by lots of different names depending on uh, who, what family or what area you're in, but that's what it is. It's, a, it's like bacon, but very salty, really salty. So then I'm gonna make another one of our, my favorite side dishes that's so easy to make and goes really good with this supper, soup, beans, and cornbread, but also with other suppers, whether it's chicken or beef or whatever, and it's fried cabbage. It is so simple and easy to make. Now when it comes to fried cabbage, that's a very popular uh, side dish in the mountains of Appalachia and probably in other places too, but definitely in my area of Appalachia and beyond uh, in the mountains here. And with a recipe like that, a common dish, what happens is there's tons of different variations and all of them are good. It's just that each family's got their own kind of go-to recipe that they use. A lot of um, people, when they're gonna fry cabbage, they start by frying onions. They actually put onions in them. I don't do that. I just like the fried cabbage. Uh, a lot of people, uh, one of my dear friends, Carolyn Anderson, she makes it kind of, um, puts a spin on it that actually uses soy sauce. I will link to her recipe in the description below. So she's got her own kind of unique thing. She adds some peppers and some onions, I think. It's onions, peppers, I know. Anyway, different little variations. When it comes to actually frying the cabbage, a lot of people like to do it in either bacon grease, like my uh, fat back that I fried tonight, that, some kind of ham, um, or if you've got ham drippings and put some ham in with the cabbage, or just butter. I've used just butter. Some people like just olive oil. So there's so many different variations. Even when it gets to actually how you, um, how done you like it, there's different variations. I like mine with still a little bit of, not crunch, but just after the crunch. Some people like theirs cooked until it's really soft, really breaking down soft, and they like to do it low and slow. So those are all variations. Of course, the seasoning, besides the onion or the peppers that I mentioned, that's also, lots of people like different things. I usually stick with just salt and pepper, and I like to fry my cabbage in uh, kind of a, either butter, or if I, like I've just fried that fat back, a mixture. I'll put some butter and I'll put some of those drippings. So we eat a lot of cabbage. And I already have some, uh, I had one cabbage that was already cut, had been cut on and we've been eating on in the refrigerator, so I've already got some in a bowl. Now cabbage is like one of those things, um, like greens, that it looks like you've got a whole lot and then when it cooks down you don't have as much as what you thought. So I've got another cabbage and I'm going to at least um, cut one half of it and add to my other. Again, personal preference on how, you know, how you want your pieces. Do you want great old big pieces? Like maybe, that one's really big, like strips like that. Do you want them really tiny, you know, kind of like slaw or kraut? It's the same thing with kraut and slaw, but especially kraut. Some people like it really fine. Granny likes hers really fine, and other people like more of a coarser chop. So again, that's just personal, personal preference. The good thing, another good thing for me about uh, fried cabbage is everybody likes it. Corey and Katie like it, we like it, everybody really enjoys it. So it's one of those things that I know will please everybody. And also I found that it um, warms up rather nicely. It warms up rather nicely. So if we have leftovers, we're always sure to eat them the next day. I'm one of those people that love to eat cabbage raw. I love it. Sometimes that's just what I eat for dinner. I just chop up some cabbage, put some salt on it, maybe get me some crackers or something to go with it, um, something else if I have it in the refrigerator, and then that's what I eat. That's my dinner. That's what I like. I like it that much. I really do. Um, Granny likes raw cabbage like that with salt, and Corey likes it, so I guess we're passing it down the generations. But now I'm going to go over to the stove and show you how I fry my cabbage. So I'm gonna pour some of my, a little bit of my drippings in there. And I'm gonna add 
a little pat of butter too. And I've got my uh, pan on, I don't know, about a little over medium, I guess. I'm gonna let that warm for just a moment. Now that my butter's melted, I'm going to go ahead and add my cabbage. Add some, whoops, add some seasoning to it. Pepper and salt. You could add anything you wanted to, though garlic powder, I don't know, whatever, whatever you prefer. And then I'm going to kind of stir it around to help it get coated. to sneak a little piece though and eat it. Now that it's cooked just a moment or two, I'm going to turn the heat down and then I'm going to cover it. Let some of the moisture come out of the cabbage. Um, help steam it, kind of, and cook it. You want to keep a track, keep track on it though, and keep a check on it as it cooks. Because what happens to me is sometimes I'll forget and it'll begin to burn on the bottom. So it doesn't take like well, it doesn't take long for me because I like that crunch. I like for it to be a little crunchy. And if you want it to be really done, really soft, every little piece real soft kind of like boiled cabbage, you'll need to cook it low and slow and for a longer period of time. And I don't have a lid big enough to fit this, so I use a one of my bacon sheets and just put it over top of it. Another thing you can do if you uh, decide that it's not, you know, it's getting too dry. See, there's one little brown piece, but if it's getting too dry, you can add a little bit of water. Get you a little bit of hot water and just add it, and that will help it further cook and steam. You don't need to add too much, though. You can also add, you know, I could add more butter, more bacon grease, or whatever that you're, that you're using. cornbread out and I'm going to check the cabbage again. At this stage a lot of people might uh, crumble up bacon or ham or something like that and put in it. That would be that would kind of be like a one pot meal if you did that I think. But I just don't ever do that. I just prefer just the cabbage. And usually I'm having some sort of meat. Like tonight I have the fat back. So I think I'm going to call this done. Looks pretty good. I'll let it cook just a little bit longer as I get everything set up for Matt to come get his plate. And then we'll be ready to eat. Well, it's kind of last minute, but it looks like a feast, huh? Uh-huh. Looks delish. It's my favorite kind of eating.
Got some of Papaw Tony's. Is a hot, hot oh. tomato pickle. I've been looking forward to this right here. Mm. I love those things. On them peppers too. And some pickled beets. Those pickled beets are actually from 2021. I hope our beets do better this year. And they did last year. This is a feast. If you hear some sizzling, you've probably been hearing that. Katie's cooking her something over there. So that's what that is. She don't necessarily like this meal as much as me and Matt do. But she does love the fried cabbage. I'm sure she'll... She'll be into eating some of that with what she's cooking. I like to crumble my cornbread up like Matt did and, and put the beans on top of it with all that wonderful you know, bean juice, pot liquor. I could eat this meal in the winter like now it's just it's really good on a cold night like tonight cold evening uh, but I could also eat it in the middle of summer if it was during the summer I would want kill lettuce with it that's like a traditional Appalachian dish I will if you don't know what it is I'll put a link in the description below so you can go find out about it it's gonna be a real feast I won't get any of the Papaw's pickles because they're too hot for me. I don't like spicy things. I will get me some little onion pieces. And some salt. Whoops, that was pepper. I'm, I'm taking up Matt's habit, so I don't want no pepper. Put me some salt. Mm. A real feast. I hope you enjoyed seeing how simple it is to fry cabbage and Again, it's one of those recipes that's so basic that then you can just put your own spin on it. What kind of oil you want to fry the cabbage in, how big you want to make the cabbage, how long you want to cook it. If you want to add any peppers or ham or bacon or anything like that, it's very easy to adjust to, to what you prefer and your family likes the best. Um, but also so simple and quick. But one of those things too that's such a comforting feeling food that it's really good. As always, I hope you'll continue to drop back by often and help us celebrate Appalachia, which is a whole lot of traditional foodways like we're eating tonight.